It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, January 5th, 2012. I am James Burns. We are joined now by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how's it going? Not bad. Uh, another interesting day. Indeed. It is a very interesting day. A lot of stuff we're going to go over today. Uh, first off, I want to get your take on uh, the uh, political front with the primaries. Uh, what did you think about the uh, results from the Iowa caucus? Well, um, I have... Uh a couple of pieces of information uh, that uh, came out yesterday in the publication. And one of them is a uh, synopsis of when the votes uh, were put into the system uh, to deprive Ron Paul of his victory. And it's pretty accurate. And also the commentaries from... Alex Jones and Watson uh, on the cash payoffs. Uh, there's no question that it was a bad job, very poorly done, especially when um, one of the people being interviewed, uh, it was Reagan's, uh, Reagan. Um, one of the people who worked with Bush or Reagan, and he, they said to him, well, who's going to win? And he said, um, Mitt Romney by 14 votes. Now, you wouldn't make a comment like that unless you knew that there was a rig, that the whole thing was being manipulated. Um, you would have said, uh, well, I think I like Mitt Romney, but it, it probably will be very close. But that dang that, whatever his name was, he's very well known. Um, uh, he had to tell him 14. So he knew the plan ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of shady outcomes regarding the uh, Iowa caucus, despite the fact that Ron Paul did end up in the top tier. A lot of people believe that he should have done way better. And you had Rick Santorum, who was, you know, just a day earlier polling in the bottom tier. He came out of nowhere. And, you know, to the average person, that has to, you know, it's not smell right. And it doesn't. It can't happen. It's beyond beyond statistical probability. And uh, these people who are rigging these things have to be a bunch of jackasses. I mean, I I just, I can't believe how stupid they are. Now, of course, I'm sure Ron Paul knows everything that we know and more. And uh, what I would do is go a couple of more primaries and see if they pull it again. And if they do, uh, I would go before the public and say the Republican National Committee or party or whatever they're called is rigging the elections. And here's the specifics. So I've decided I'm going to run as an independent because they won't give me a fair shot at it. Yeah, I mean, that seems like the uh, course of action that they're taking, even though they couldn't stop him from making the top three in Iowa. And he's uh, polling in second place right now in New Hampshire behind Romney. Romney has 38%. He's dropped a little bit, but Ron Paul's going up at 24%, with Santorum trailing at 11%. So I wouldn't be too surprised if we get uh, the similar uh, results coming in New Hampshire. Now, Bob, I would hope that we don't have that outcome. I hope that it's honest and fair, but, I mean, it hasn't been that way for a long time when it comes to the election process. Well, I'm afraid you're right, and... uh... I think the public knows what's going on, and I think they're realizing more and more they've lost control of their country. Uh, their representatives don't represent them anymore, and uh, they're just a bunch of rabble hanging around waiting to go to an internment camp or be picked up by the military at the request of the President of the United States who heard that they said something nasty about him, so off they go, and they'll disappear them. And that, that's where this whole thing's going. Yeah, I mean, a, a blind man could see it, Bob. I mean, that's the direction our country's been heading for the past decade alone. And I'm glad you brought up Obama because he gave a speech earlier today 
in Iowa. And as, as we both know, he uh, signed the uh, National Defense Authorization Act uh, on New Year's Eve, and now he's uh, caught a lot of flack for appointing this guy to the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau without uh, congressional oversight. And I want you to listen to this one-minute clip that he gave to this uh, crowd in Ohio regarding his obligation as president to do whatever he wants, basically, without Congress. So here's the clip, Bob. These are ideas that have support from Democrats. They have support from Republicans around the country, independents around the country. I want to work with Congress to get them done. But when Congress refuses to act, and as a result, hurts our economy and puts our people at risk, then I have an obligation as president to do what I can without them. I've got an obligation to act on behalf of the American people. And I'm not going to stand by while a minority in the Senate puts party ideology ahead of the people that we were elected to serve. Not with so much at stake, not at this make or break moment for middle class Americans. We're not going to let that happen. There he is, the president, a true, dear leader, a true Obama. Dictator. And the, the true ra- dictator. And the rabble who believes that crap. I know, it's very tragic. Bob. What is your take from that, you know, little uh, segment of that speech he gave? He's dictator. Yeah, and it's simple. just very simple. I mean, it's a very, you know, you know, cut to the chase, you know, answer. And that's one thing I respect about you, Bob. You don't beat around the bush. I mean, could you believe he actually said that, that he could do whatever he wanted without the, the Congress? I mean, I mean, he's been doing it, you know, since he became the 44th president. But to actually openly say that and, you know, as part of his re-election bid, because, I mean, obviously he's now officially running for re-election. I mean, that just sh- tells you the direction we're heading. What else would you expect? Yeah. And if we get any of those meatheads from the Republican Party, Ian will get the same thing. And, know, and that's what's so funny okay. there, Bob. I mean, you ha- you're going to have, obviously, Romney and Gingrich and Santorum, the big three neocons right now. They're going to come out and obviously bash Obama for what he just said. But if any of those three get selected as the next puppet in chief, they're just going to pick up exactly where Obama left off. That's true. That's the sad state of where the United States is. Uh, Going into the election, uh, we'll probably get a decent economy in Europe, England, the United States going sideways. And that's all they can hope for. And that will be helped by all the money that's being poured into the economy in Europe. And that will slosh over into the United States and England. And during that cover period, uh, the president will try to tell everybody that everything's better and it's going to get better and all the good things that are needed for re-election. And um, I would guess that if the Republican National Committee continues to steal elections, that Ron Paul will run on another ticket. And it will devastate the Republican Party, number one. Number two, he may very well be elected. And even if he's not, the damage is going to be caused is going to be unbelievable politically. Uh, they think they're funny doing what they're doing, they're not going to get away with anything because too many people know what they're doing. You're absolutely right, Bob. I mean, before the days of the Internet, back when the mainstream media controlled everything, the corporations such as the TV, the newspaper, and radio, they probably could get away with this. But now with the Internet out there, which they're going after with the SOPA, I mean, it, the information is, you know, going through them and, they can't stop it. I mean, it's, it's like they, they set up this, this weak dam, and they try to plug one hole, and then a whole bunch of other pl- holes you know, just burst open, and eventually it's going to all start crumbling down. And it's sad to see this, the mainstream media attacking Ron Paul, but also the GOP itself, because not only are they attacking Ron Paul, they're attacking all these new Republicans who have decided to you know, take one for the team, go down to the election office, and register Republican just so they can support this guy, they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot. You're right about that. And uh, 
but that is the situation that Ron Paul is in, and he is a politician, so he'll figure out the way he wants to go on it, and then we'll go with him. And uh, I don't know as yet what that will be, but the the Republicans who are doing these mischievous things have got to realize that everybody in the country knows what they're doing, and they're not going to get away with it. No, they're not. I mean... No matter how long it takes, they're not going to get away with it. The, the, the Nazis, for example, thought they could get away with what they did. But, you know, eventually they're going to get their own Nuremberg. And Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And you were touching on the economic situation just a moment ago. You believe that uh, it's going to stabilize for some time, Bob, or is there still a little bit of uh, up and down going on in Europe and the rest of the world? I think there are listeners I have to understand that – is a thing called fractional banking. And what it allows under prudent circumstances is for banks to lend money. And a, a guideline has been historically for every dollar in assets, they can lend nine. So you're talking about a trillion dollars being laid out by the <clears throat> the uh, uh, Federal Reserve, and the banks who get it, uh, they may leverage it 6 or 7 to 1 or 9 to 1, or they can go as high as they want. And so what I'm saying here is they're going to create probably more than $9 trillion, maybe 20. Uh, so that means that uh, we're going to get higher inflation, uh, there may be such devaluations, but not in uh, any important currencies, because they got all that money there. And the stock markets in Western Europe and the United States will go slightly higher because of it. Uh, there's other negative uh, factors that are entering into the markets right now. But uh, I think the powers that be behind the throne, so to speak, are uh, happy to go sideways. Uh, they know they can't make the market run away, and if they do, there'll be all kinds of questions and so on. And so um, I think this coming year will be a year uh, politically and economically that will be firm because of what I've just described. And the firmness uh, could last quite a while. Uh, it all depends on how much money is created by the central banks. More linearly, this time, the individual banks, which is 523 of them at the moment. Uh, it all depends on what they do as to how long it carries on. So we can't answer that question yet. But I can answer the question, how is it going to do this year? And probably okay. Unemployment will stay about the same. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, inflation will move higher, uh, probably up to a real 15% or so. And it'll keep on doing that. That's the price they have to pay in order to uh, keep the rural financial sector and sovereign nations from going bankrupt. So that's what I see for the year. Uh, yes, things can change that. Uh, we can have everybody killing each other in the Middle East. And uh, we can also have financial problems that we can't anticipate at this time. Uh, we could have Greece and maybe others leave the euro. Uh, there's, there's plenty of things that could change uh, that estimate. So it's very hard. Uh, to make a call in here, this is, <laughs> believe me, this is not easy. Um, so uh, what do you do uh, if you have extra money? Well, you put it in gold and silver-related assets and don't worry about it. And um, you get out of the general stock market except for gold and silver shares and out of the bond market but not paying you anything anyway. And... Um, in fact, it's probably a good time to take profits, too, because uh, you don't have to pay nominally until a year from April. 
And so it gives you a long time span to have the money that you normally would have to turn in in the form of taxes. So um, we just don't know how things are going to go. But based upon nothing untoward happening, that's what will happen. And if bad things happen, um, all bets are off. We don't know where it's going to head economically, financially, politically. We just don't know. I agree with you entirely on that. We really just don't know what's going to happen until, unfortunately, it happens. And I want to get these out of the way, these email questions, because they do tie into uh, – they're economical – and they're, uh, the question that they're asking by these uh, couple that send me some emails, and you can do so at freedomfiles.us if you have a question for Bob Chapman. Uh, first one comes from Silver Bullet. He's asking, is there a currency war going on between the U.S., EU, and China? And if there is, who's going to win? Well, it all depends, I guess, who wins the war. And there will be a war. I just don't know when. And uh, China uh, will probably lose. Uh, Russia may, they stand in a 50-50 chance of survival. Uh, the damage that will be caused by a war, if it's uh, Syria and Iran, will be extensive all throughout Europe because they'll put this under NATO. And, uh, you know, Paris is there one morning, next morning it's gone. I mean, this is serious stuff. And so, uh, again... We just don't know where this is all going. It's not good. And so with your assets, you go to the safest place. You should have dehydrated and freeze-dried foods put away with a water uh, filter and be able to defend your family. I see that gun sales hit records in November and then again in December. So obviously the public thinks that maybe something is not good out there. And, you know, we've been seeing record gun sales since 1966 that's 45 years so there's a lot of guns out there Definitely. and they make a point of that because you don't know who's going to do what or what's going to happen it, it's a, a very dangerous world i just read a report of um policemen trying to go in uh, somebody's home they knocked on the door there was no answer they walked in and were met in a hail of gunfire and um, one of them died, six of them were wounded, and uh, they didn't kill the person inside the house. It looks like they must have beat him half to death. But uh, you're going to see more and more of this. Uh, I don't know whether the person was guilty of anything. Maybe. I mean, there's no, there's no way of telling. Uh, that's a preliminary report. And they had all together, I don't know, 30 or 40 people running around trying to kill this person that was in the house. They weren't very successful. Uh, which brings up another thing. There's a lot of people out there who are really good shooters. And a lot of them are veterans as well, like myself. And um, they can put it at the ring, through the ring at 1,000 yards. And so uh, all of you cowboys out there who... Uh, uh, think, you know, shooting it up is fun. It's not. It might get you killed. You should do everything possible to draw people out who are not easy to capture or whatever you want to call it. And I know sometimes that's difficult, um, but even if you have to wait days, it's better than having an innocent policeman shot, or in this case, uh, six or seven of them. Uh, this guy must have been a good shot. And you're going to run into more and more of that. And if they keep on doing that, then there won't be any police departments. Think about it. And we need the police. I mean, there, there is such a thing as law and order. Because if you don't have the police around to protect people, then bad people are going to run loose and do all sorts of bad things. Well, you're Not absolutely right. About. You're absolutely right in that regard, Bob. I mean, I... I... A lot of times I, I'm very critical of bad cops, and I don't do it because I hate law enforcement. I do it because I want to shame them. I want them to have this mirror in front of them and recognize what their fellow men and women in blue have been doing to the American citizens and how it's a violation of our freedoms, our liberties, our rights, and we're not going to stand for this. And I sincerely hope that 
when it hits the fan, when things finally fall out and they do declare martial law and they start coming for us, whoever group they want to come after, that some of these men and women in law enforcement have been paying attention to what we've been talking about, our listeners, our supporters of the Constitution and Bill of Rights, and are going to say, no, I'm not going to go and arrest American citizens. Just because the President of the United States says he doesn't like what's being said about him by that person. I, I give you the classic situation. You get 20 people from the military. Uh, they're supposed to go and pick up uh, a dozen people who have said nasty things about the president. And they go out and they start collecting them, and uh, they get a truck full of them. And uh, they go to this last house, and they're going after Mrs. Shirley Jones. Well, really? And one of the guys in the troop says, hey, wait a minute. This is my mother's home. I'm not going to go in and collect my mother to send her to some internment camp. What do you guys think? And they're going to say, no, we're not going to do that either. So they're not going to go in and pick up Shirley Jones, and they may even let all the people in the truck go and tell them to go home. And if it doesn't come to that, I remind the military, let's say there's five million of them, with all their sophisticated weapons, there's 180 million armed people in America, 80 have been in the military, and half of them have been in combat. Uh, do you like those odds? I don't think so. Because once you start fighting people on their own soil, they will fight to the death, and you do not want that. The kill ratio, no matter what it is for you, even though it might be 50, 50 to 1, you're still going to lose. So it's not worth it. So don't do it. We want you on our side so we can change things in America. And if that's the way government decides that we, the people, are going to have to change things, then we'll do that. Yeah, we're not the enemy. We we support the troops more than a lot of these uh, you know, call, guys that drive around with the yellow ribbons and I support the troops bumper stickers because they're they're just you know going with the cliche, Bob. They don't understand the gravity of the situation when it comes to what's happening in the world. They don't understand that continuing to go into these countries, nation building, uh, invasion, liberation, whatever you want to call it, is ticking off a lot of other countries right now. And we see what's happening in Israel. I mean, with the tensions brewing there between Israel, the U.S., and Iran, you now have thousands of American troops that are going to be deployed to Israel for what they're calling a joint military exercise this spring. And they're saying the troops are going to be stationed in Israel for an unspecific amount of time. Meanwhile, Obama has also signed into uh, law more economic sanctions targeting Iran's central bank and marketing sector. And that is not good for 2012. It's called, sanctions are called something that they're really not. Sanctions are a form of warfare. And don't ever, any of you out there think that they're not. And if they can't bring them down with sanctions, then they have to invade them. And um, will Russia get involved? Maybe. Uh, will China? Maybe. Uh, does the State Department worry about that? I don't know. They probably do. Yeah, I mean, I think that there has to be. I, I don't. I just don't see the entire Pentagon as being, you know, in support of this 100 percent. Because I've heard plenty of reports out from several generals that are openly speaking against how insane this is. This possibility of a war with Iran. There's been quite a few of them. Uh, surpri surprisingly many. I mean, Iran and Syria will be destroyed. There's no question. But you're using NATO troops. I wouldn't want to be living in Israel, nor would I want to be living in Iran at that time either. But lots of people are going to get killed. Lots of things are going to be destroyed. And uh, if it gets to be a wide-ranging market, um, excuse me, a wide-ranging war, then Moscow, Beijing, New York, San Francisco, and on and on and on are going to get bombed. I mean, you might wake up one morning and look over from New Jersey and see that New York City is just a crater in the ground. Uh, the capabilities here are enormous. I mean, these people are insane. And you're, you're absolutely right about that, Bob. I mean, this is 
a potential domino effect. If we attack Iran and if Russia and China, who both said that they're going to support Iran if they're attacked, they declare war on us, it's going to be very similar to what we see, what we saw happening nearly 100 years ago with the First World War. You know, the war to end all wars or the Great War, whatever you want to call it. But the difference is we have a lot more um, advanced killing weapons. You're right about that. Weapons that can kill 30 million people at a time. Wipe out whole cities with one or maybe even two bombs. We saw that in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, and the bombs have gotten even more potent and deadly since then. And this is something that I just I try to explain to you know people that I know that are Republicans that love Ron Paul on his domestic policy, yet just can't stand him on the foreign policy. I try to drive this message home to them why we we don't need to be everywhere around the world, why we're in a very, very dangerous situation right now, at the precipice of a possible third world war, and they just can't seem to grasp how bad things really are. This this war on terror, this fear of a couple of extremists in caves that might or might not end up bombing us is nothing compared to a global nuclear war. That's right. And just ask some of the people who just came back from the Middle East and they didn't get bombed with uh, nuclear weapons. It's awful. I mean, did they that they are even contemplating doing this is insanity. So uh, I suppose that all the important people in the Illuminati and the major cities in the world, uh, they'll be underground hiding. And I think that's good uh, because when it's over and uh, we can go and collect them more easily and bring them on trial for what they've done. I wish I could remember that fellow who was on yesterday on television saying that Romney would win by 14 votes. Was it Carl Rove? Um, yes. Yes, that weasel. I mean, he knew, and he had to let everybody he know he knew. Yeah, I mean, that, that guy is one of the, the major neocon puppet master scumbags right there. and uh, It's just amazing how... He's a pedophile, too. Yeah, well... You know, it's been proven that most of them are, unfortunately. I mean, these are some nasty people that we're dealing with. I mean, they're they're heartless, they're soulless, they're sociopaths, psychopaths, child rapers. I mean, they're they're basically the Sanduskies in D.C. I'll tell you, they're not people I want to associate with. No, and unfortunately, they're running the show, as you and I both well know. And, Bob, I, I want you to talk to the... Republicans out there that are on the fence are supporting somebody other than Ron Paul that are against Ron Paul because of his foreign policy. Why should they consider, you know, changing tune? Why should they consider looking at the situation in the Middle East and the rest of the world from a different perspective than the one they've been programmed by, you know, the mainstream media and by their neocon warmongers? I have lived in half the countries in the world, maybe not half, maybe 30 percent. So I know lots about that stuff. And Americans are very, very much liked in most countries in the world because people think that they're good, decent people. And so I think you'd have to give them an, an 85 rating among foreigners as to what foreigners think about them. Now we'll switch sideways and we'll say, what do all of these foreigners think about the United States government? And they would get a minus 85, minus 85. So the groundwork is already there. I mean, what America is doing is nothing new. It's been going on and being done for a long time, uh, back into the 1800s for that matter. People got a hold of government, and they did things that they shouldn't have done. And it's nothing for Americans to be ashamed of because they didn't do it and it was a long time ago, but they're still doing it. Not the same people, but the same kind of people. So uh, you can expect in 
it to be normal that people would be this criminal. And so with that said, you can expect the worst. We should not be running around the world telling everybody what to do, and if they don't agree, we shoot them. It's pretty simple. And uh, there have been times, even today, or back to after the Second World War, when American soldiers were welcome, and, and, and all personnel, of course, uh, in, in certain countries, uh, in others they were never really welcome, but they, uh, they weren't jumped upon. And so we shouldn't be using battleships to do what we want economically, financially, politically in other countries. It's wrong. And, you know, I'm not a peacenik. You know, I know how to rock and roll. And anybody that says they like that has to be some sort of an insane, insane person because killing people is not nice. And... So we shouldn't be in any of those countries. And if we, if we weren't there, people wouldn't hate our government. And Ron Paul is absolutely right. He's been in the military. Granted, he was a doctor. I think it was six years. He was in the Air Force. And he certainly served his time for his country and uh, probably helped a lot of people live who might have not lived otherwise. And he's helped a lot of people without asking anything for it. Minorities as well. I don't know how any Republican can stand by and continents which they just saw perpetrated in Iowa. It was a rigged election. And the people who were the recipients of the rigging, they knew what was going on. And Carl Rove knew what was going on. They all knew. It wasn't even choreographed well. They let the cat out of the bag. They're dumb. They're dumb. And I hope Ron Paul does something about it. I don't know whether he will or not, but if they do it two or three more times, you're going to have to do something. And that would be to drop out and run in another ticket. And then all you Republicans can watch the disintegration of your party. Because if Ron Paul leaves, it'll fall flat in its face. And the Democrats will take over again in the House and the Senate. You, you people just don't get it. Just don't get it. This is not politics. This is not Republican versus Democrat. This is all about survival. We have people who control both parties in America and many parties throughout the world. Who want world government? They don't give a darn who wins. They control almost everybody by paying them off. That's simple. And so if we're going to allow them to continue to do that, are we going to be the last guy thrown to the alligators? You saw what happened to the brown shirts in 1933 after Hitler took full power through the Enabling Act. You saw what happened in the late 30s in Russia. Anybody that Stalin didn't care for, it just liquidated them. These are, the, these are the people who really built the edifice of Adolf Hitler and Stalin. Think about that. They were the first guys to get killed. So all you people who were voting these scumbags into office, and every one of them is a scumbag who's running, with the exception of Ron Paul. They're all controlled by the Illuminists from behind the scenes. And if don't, you don't believe that, you're dumb. You're just plain dumb. And what's going to happen is they'll start collecting people, and they'll say, Mr. Jones, uh, we have a warrant uh, here for you to go come with us because uh, uh, you said some nasty things on radio about our president, and uh, uh, we're here to pick you up. And you're going to say, well, uh, I'm a good citizen, and, and I don't break the law, and I was a good Republican, and the guy from the Army is going to turn around and say, you're probably right, but we have to pick you up anyway, especially you people who help bring the scum to power. Do you see how it works? Read history. Yeah, and that's going to happen, unfortunately, if we 
allow this tyranny to continue to fester and grow. It doesn't matter if it's, like you said, if it doesn't matter if it's Obama, Romney, Newt Gingrich, Santorum, or Rick Perry. I mean, we're, we're going to get basically the status quo, a continuation of what's been going on for far too long now. And, yeah, you're going to have plenty of people that say, well, wait a minute, I, I, supported, I supported Obama. I supported Romney. I supported Newt. Well, too bad. We don't care. You're on the list. You're going anyways. <laughs> and then put your kid in foster homes. You might even let your wife be a hooker. Think about it. You've got to understand what you're dealing with here. Not only are they sociopaths, they're psychopaths. I mean, just look at the trade that's been going on for 100 years in children. And most of it's been politicians and transnational CEOs of big corporations and Wall Street. I understand there's a new book coming out on Richard Nixon that's very interesting. Probably should tell me about it, and uh, I'll let you see when it comes out. Yeah, I heard some interesting things from that book. Uh, so supposedly Nixon actually had a, a gay lover for a, a long period of time. <laughs> for years, <laughs> Bibi Reboso. I mean, Cuban that's crazy. From Miami, and he used to beat the crap out of his wife every day. Jeez. The guy was an animal. I mean, it's just sad. President of the that... United States. How disgusting. Yeah. I mean, that guy had to be one sicko. Yeah, and that's what's sad, Bob, because most of them were like that. You know, I, I've heard bad stories about LBJ as well. I mean, these guys are the worst of the worst. How do you work for a government your entire life, and when you die, your state estate is worth six hundred million dollars? Somebody's got to outline that for me. In the case of LBJ, I know it. The, the numbers just don't add up. I mean, it's the same thing over and over again. You can take a look at what. You know, how that happened with LBJ. And then look at look at uh, Newt Gingrich, prime example. He goes into Congress. He's not really worth that much. And he comes out of Congress, and he's a multimillionaire. They all steal. Kickbacks. Uh, look at Santorum. Uh, as soon as he left office, he became a millionaire. All these companies that he went to bat for in Congress hired him from paying these ungodly pay off salaries so that he can get rich. Absolutely. They're whores. Yeah. And in fact, they're worse like... because at least a at least a male or a female hooker, you know, says, look, this is what I do for a living and this yeah. is what it costs. Uh, they don't do that. They hide in the closet with little boys and little girls. Yeah, they're real scumbags and it's already come out that Centorum has had a number of ethics violations just like Newt Gingrich did and it really makes you wonder, Bob Shouldn't there be kind of like a, um, a a list of rules? Like if you if you're anti-constitution, if you're anti-bill of rights, if you have some uh, past when Congress or in business where you have a criminal record or ethics violations, you're not allowed to be you know a candidate for office. I'll tell you one thing: when you post this program, uh, you're going to get a lot of heat. I mean, we're, we're taking a lot of a lot of people apart here. I'm I used mean, to it. I don't care. Well, I'm, I've been used to it for two years doing what I do. I mean, even though I'm a small fish by comparison, all the other ones out there, you know, we got to stand up. we got to speak out. No matter how big or small you are, if we don't, then tyranny wins, you know, just like the founders said. And I'm willing to, you know, stand by the First Amendment uh, to whatever end. I mean, somebody has to speak out because the mainstream media-controlled puppet reporters, they're not going to say anything. That's true. And it, they just continue to discredit themselves, and – I came across this, uh, to see the uh, w the press secretary's uh, briefing room for the president in the White House. Uh, there was a hot mic, Bob, and they were they caught several reporters making some uh, shrewd comments about Ron Paul. And one of them said this, see this room, two-thirds of us will be laid off when Ron Paul is president. And you know something? That's true, because most of you are not real reporters. That's right. But, I mean, somebody's got to speak up because... Everyone at uh, Fox News and uh, MSNBC, CNN, everywhere else, they're not speaking out. They're not telling us the truth. They're focused on uh, the reality show of the week or the playoffs or the NFL or the upcoming uh, national championship college game. That's what they're focused on. They're not focused on the important issues. I mean, they're not going after Gingrich or Santorum or Romney. But somebody has to, and that's one reason why the alternative media continues to grow while the dinosaur mainstream media is dying. 
and they are dying. I saw the uh, New York Times increase their price of their newspaper by 50 cents. That, that'll probably just to be uh, their death knoll. That should be the end of the New York Times. And they're not the only ones. I mean, newspapers throughout the country are, are having to cut back. They're having to shrink the size of their newspaper, uh, downsize their staff because people are tired of the crap in the newspapers, not to mention the fact that most of them uh, can't even write worth a damn. There's always typos and errors every time I try to read one of the local newspapers. And, you know, Bob Chapman's our guest, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And it's just like, like you've been doing for a long time now, Bob. You've been one of the trailblazers out there speaking the truth. And if we weren't doing this, we would already be way worse off than we are. And no matter what happens to me, no matter what happens to you or anyone else out there doing what we're doing, exposing these bastards and telling the people the truth, you know, in my opinion, what I do here is is worth the price that I'm willing to pay down the road. Well, uh, I think that uh, what we're talking about here uh, is things that people don't know. Uh, because I have been involved in the genre, which is very extensive, since 1960, um, there's only a handful of people who are alive who know what I know, who've experienced and went through it. And they don't know, and this is why I'm telling you this, that the Illuminists tried to take over in, the ni- in 1970. And they quickly folded their tent and picked another date, which was 2012. And it took them all those years to try to put this whole thing together through their organizations, etc. And uh, we stopped them by informing enough people in the country through books like Men They Call a Conspiracy by my partner, Gary Allen. And there were other books of the time, A Texas Looks at Linden by G. Evans Haley and Alan Stang and the many books that he wrote on this whole situation. And... Um, and, of course, uh, G. Edward Griffin, uh, who is still with us, fortunately. And uh, this past year, uh, we, bought, we lost, um, uh, he was only a friend of mine for 50 years. Uh, um, just can't think of his name. But anyway, uh, we saw all that. We lived through it. We knew where this was headed. And we weren't good enough. There weren't enough of us. People wouldn't listen. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have talk radio. We did the best we could. But we know what to expect. And that's why I don't live in the United States. Because if I did, I would have been dead long ago. I know. It's just... It is... um... You know, you have to, you know, something I, th- I thought about when I first started speaking out, you know, just doing a little web show about what kind of danger I'm putting myself into and, you know, so many others out there as well, you know, talking about this stuff. And, you know, one night, you know, it, it kind of terrified me that I thought about, well, you know what, you know, I'd rather go down, you know, if I had to only live once, I'd rather go down speaking the truth, standing for what I believe in, than, than die a thousand times as a coward, you know, you know, Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. But it, it's something that I know is coming. I know that they're planning on doing something big very, very soon. I mean, they haven't been doing all this for nothing. You know, the passage of all these countless police state laws over the past decade alone, militarizing the police. And I, I just have this bad feeling, and this is something we've discussed months ago, Bob. I have a bad feeling that if Ron Paul continues to do really well in the primaries, that something really bad might happen to him. Well, he knows that. He knows that the, ch- the, the chance he's taken, just like you and I have, only his uh, chances of assassination are far greater than ours. 
But he knows all that, so that is not even a consideration. He's gone for it. He's put his life on the line for the American people. And we've got to help him. We've got to support him financially and otherwise. Coming in third by only a few thousand votes is nothing. It's just like being first. It doesn't mean that much. Sure, it meant a lot to these characters who think they run the country or think they're masters of the universe. We get news for them. We're going to beat them. It's not going to be easy, but we'll accomplish it. When will people really get mad? And I believe that day is coming because gas prices are already starting to go up. You're going to see food prices go up as well as unemployment is going to be rising. A lot more businesses are going to start shutting down. I mean, that's been going on for a while now. So it's only a matter of time before something happens. I don't know what, Bob, and I, I don't think anyone really knows what's going to transpire whether it's just you know a natural occurrence or a false flag event. But I do believe that we're going to see something really bad happen in 2012. That's going to be the spark. Well, if they try to collect people's weapons, uh, they're going to have a problem. In November, there was the greatest record purchase of guns in history. And December, this last month, that record was broken. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I, I ask you, as logical, intelligent human beings, what does that tell you? And as I said earlier in the show, this move toward weapons started in 1966. And there are hundreds of thousands of people out there who have all kinds of weapons that have never been registered anywhere. Or if they were, the person who originally signed for them was probably deceased. So they're not going to be able to run down at least a half or more of the weapons. And there's a lot of people out there who have 20 and 30 and 40 assault weapons. And they'll hand those out like popcorn to their neighbors and say, okay, when they come, shoot them, whoever they may be. Now, I'll, I'll tell you this, Bob, right now, and I'll tell everyone that's listening this. I mean, I do this because I support the First Amendment, and I want it to be a peaceful revolution. But I'm, I'm not going to allow myself to be dragged away. I'm not. If I have to go down, I'm willing to go down fighting. I don't want to kill anybody. But I get the feeling that I'm not the only one that, that feels this way. And if it comes to a shooting war after we've tried to exhaust and change everything peacefully – by trying to get Ron Paul in the White House and other measures as well, then so be it. I'm not going to live as a slave. And I think that reflects the feeling of a good many Americans, probably more than half, and um, maybe as many as 75 or 80 percent. And uh, we're, in, we're in uncharted territory which we've been forced to enter by the people who control our governments. And it's not just one government. They get the same problems in Germany and in Israel. Yeah. I mean, what I, what I see here, Bob, is this is a fight that not only the people of the United States are going to have to wage, it's a fight that all of humanity are going to have to endure and take on against the forces of tyranny and the Illuminati. We have about a minute left, Bob. Uh, how can people get the International Forecaster? Uh, they can go to theinternationalforecaster.com. That's theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, it's about business, finance, economic, social, political issues all over the world. We publish on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Usually runs 35 or 40 pages each time. have a hard copy that gets out twice a month for those who are not on the Internet and everything you need to know each week is in that publication. You can also contact uh, www.intforecaster.com, intforecaster.com. For those of you who would like to ask questions, and we answer everyone, get reports of the international forecaster, whether they're digital or hard copy. And if you'd like to uh, get a copy of our uh, recommendations for gold and silver shares, uh, all you have to do is email us. 
and that address is Bob, B-O-B at I-N-T-F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R dot com, Bob at Intforecaster dot com. And for those of you who would like to call in toll-free to get copies, that number is 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. You get your free copies. And if you want to become a subscriber, it's the best place to go to because they have a special on there for people who want to become subscribers. You get a free one-year subscription, and the deal that they're offering is really terrific. It absolutely is. Bob, thank you so much for joining us this week. I will talk to you next week, sir. See you then. Bye-bye, everyone.